Hi, Tipton Baptist. I'm coming to you today with just a brief note uh, from my desk to you. Uh, as I have sent an email out to the uh, congregation called A Note from the Pastor's Desk, uh, this is a video component to that note, which you should find in a link in the email. Uh, the purpose of this is, is not to erase our Friday word of encouragements that I still will uh, do most of the time. Uh, the intention that I have with uh, a note from the pastor's desk is to share a characteristic of God. It could be something about his name. Uh, it could be something about his workings. Uh, specifically, though, something that just reveals his character. Uh, from time to time, I'd like to start through this year in 2023 to share a note from my desk and the note will be something about his character. And today what I'd like to do is, is to share a note from you from the pastor's desk about God's love. As we just came through the second week of our Advent uh, worship season, uh, love was the characteristic that, that we talked about yesterday. Uh, and what I want to do is I just want to share something about God's being love. And it's something that you might want to grab onto and uh, look into more on your own in your Bible study and in your devotional time and in your reading. The Apostle John wrote a note about God's love in his first letter. And what John wrote was, we love because he first loved us. Without a doubt, God does love us. He's the source of love. And since he has not withheld himself because he sent his son, we know that he hasn't kept himself back from us. He's given us himself through Jesus. If he is love and is the source of love and he's given us all of himself in Jesus, then we can, we can surmise that he's given us all of his love. He does love us very much. Uh, on God, some might say that he is not loving because of his uh, actions in the world that have not prevented evil yet, at least not, not the way that our minds think of it. Although we do see God's plan at the end of time to remedy all wrongs and to, uh, to solve all these wrongs and to make right every one of the wrongs. In such a way there will be no more tears. This is another testament to God being love. God has given us all of himself through his son. He is love and he has shown his love. A writer named Andrew Murray wrote about this. I'm just going to read you a few lines from one of the works of Andrew Murray called Absolute Surrender. Andrew Murray writes this, It is the very nature and being of God to delight in communicating himself. God has no selfishness. God keeps nothing to himself. God's nature is to be always giving. In the sun and the moon and the stars and every flower you see and the, every bird in the air and every fish in the sea, God communicates life to his creatures. And the angels around his throne, the seraphim and cherubim, who are flames of fire, whence... Have they their glory? It is because God is love, and he imparts to them of his brightness and his blessedness. And we, his redeemed children, God delights to pour his love into us. And why? Because God keeps nothing for himself. From eternity God has only begotten, God had his only begotten Son, and the Father give him all things, and nothing that God had was kept back. God is love. When I read these words, that God has not withheld himself, that God has, has ushered his glory through his Son so that we might see his glory by his Son coming, that act of love is in fact for us and it is something that we can't remember. As we think of God's glory being his primary pursuit, we can begin translating that as the most loving act God could possibly make. Because as God continues to remain holy and perfect, like a wheelhouse that continues day after day, year after year, century after century, millennia after millennia, God's glory always being intact is the most loving thing God can do and be for us. And the only way we can see his glory is if he gives us a new lens to see because we were born with sin and we can't see. We are blind from birth, spiritually dead and blind. In Jesus, God gives us a new lens to see his glory that keeps going day after day, year after year, century after century. That is the most loving thing God can do for us. 
by pursuing his glory and enabling us to see it and celebrate it and enjoy him, we know God's love because it was the act of love that gave us lens to see and it was an act that he did. When we read John, when he says, we love him because he first loved us, that is an absolute promise. That is an absolute truth. That is an objective reality outside of us. We do grow in love with him because he gives us a lens to see that he is worthy of all our affection and our love. But that lens to see that he gave us is a lens that was given us out of love. He didn't send Jesus to not show his love. He sent Jesus as an act of love to show us his glory. That's the greatest thing we could ever get, and that's what Christmas is about. So from my desk to yours, and you're considering God's love, and you're meditating on the words in, in uh, Luke and in Matthew as we look at the accounts of Jesus coming, let's keep in mind that God's seeking his glory and it being broadcast throughout his universe as he sees fit and we know that we can wake up tomorrow and he'll continue to be a glorious, perfect God who is holy. We know him because of a loving act of sending Jesus to give us lenses to see he and his glory and to look forward to spending eternity with this glorious and amazing, loving God. I hope this has encouraged you a little bit from my desk to yours and I hope that you find his love as something that is a whole lot bigger and there's a whole lot more to it than a simple sentiment that we may have kind of considered it up to this day. Might we see it as the grandest thing ever because his love reveals his glory. I pray and I hope that as you're in uh, your devotional times leading up to Christmas morning, you'll consider the hope of God through the love of God for the glory of God, which gives us joy and peace. Uh, joy and peace are our last two weeks in the Advent season. And I look forward to talking about them and going into the Word with you. I continue to pray for your health spiritually and your health physically. For all those in the church who watch this, may God bless you with an increased desire for Him as He leads you to worship Him, His glorious, glorious being this holiday season throughout all of the Christmas time and all the days we have ahead. So I look forward to seeing you Sunday. I hope that we get to be together again. May God bless you as you continue to commit to the truths in His Word. See you.